Housemark, the shiny new member of PlayStation Studios, has done it again. With the surprise release of Returnal's Ascension DLC, the mighty Tower of Sisyphus has been revealed, and now we have access to one of Selene's most coveted secrets lurking inside her mind. A place that brings a lot of hidden clues to the surface, waiting to be stitched together, trying to mend a broken relationship that has crashed to the bottom of the Okanogan Lake. In the first episode of the Deep Die series for Returnal's Ascension DLC, we will walk down the halls of Saharian Memorial Hospital and shine some light on seven interesting details that can be easily missed, but are totally important to the story. The hospital is designed to be a very misleading place, and many of these tiny secrets that we will talk about complement the most obvious findings of Selene's multiple visits that will be thoroughly analyzed in an upcoming and explanatory video, the foretelling newspapers, intriguing medical and police reports, as well as the eerie apparitions of Icor and Thea. So before we lie down in that lonely stretcher at the bottom of the Tower of Sisyphus, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you won't miss our next episode here on the Visai. But for now, it's time to visit the Saharian Memorial Hospital. starting room where Selene appears every time she goes to the hospital from the Tower of Sisyphus hides a lot of interesting secrets. This starting point suffers a transformation almost every time Selene comes back after venturing the heights of the tower and finds a new puppy to make an offering for her mother. Starting from a pitch black scenario, x-ray viewing boxes, the mysterious newspaper, Every prop that is added to the scene slowly reveals the true identity of the room until we reach the final form when it is fully lit up, with a medical report that strikes us with the true purpose of this room. When Celine returns to the stretcher during the first six visits of the hospital, we can see the plaque outside the room referring to it as the cold storage room. Doing a quick research, we can see that these types of rooms are often used in hospitals and medical facilities to store blood, certain vaccines, and biopharmaceuticals. This makes absolutely no sense for Celine to appear in the middle of this room, but if we pay attention to the last time she's in the hospital, we can see that the name of the room plaque has changed from cold storage to the morgue. This is directly linked with the autopsy report that states Thea's death, which can be found on the seventh visit, but the curious details don't stop here. In the other rooms at the opposite end of the hallway, near the elevator, have an interesting link, being one the maternity ward and the other the palliative care area. The distribution of rooms is a complete anomaly, especially if we compare it with other hospitals, and it reveals the underlying symbolism around the concepts of birth or rebirth, struggle and death that is ever-present in Returnal's own loop. The Saharian Memorial Hospital is full of interesting posters and magazines that give nods to what Selene is struggling during her time in Atropos and the inner demons that live rent-free inside her head. Things like Wellness Monthly, Why Are You Here, Solve the Unsolvable, Waving, Not Drowning, How to Thrive on Adversity, Seeking Truth, Healing Wounds and Knowing Yourself or Mother's Daily Life, how to keep your career and family from falling apart, single mothers, how do they do it, imaginary friends, how to deal with them, hopes and dreams, why you don't need them, our 10-step guide to concealing despair, and obviously, 10 best microwave recipes. There's also Quit Today, why keep returning to something that is hurting you? with an image of a car near a lake that resembles the obvious car crash. Or another example 
with this poster of a crane carrying a newborn baby that reads, a baby is never a burden, which speaks directly about the hardships of raising Helios by herself. But besides all of this, there is another poster, or should I say posters, that provide more interesting details. After leaving the cold room for the first time, we get a glimpse of the hallway, and if we look to the right, we will see a framed poster with a repeating set of phrases. In its color background, there is a circular shape that repeats itself, and very faintly in the back appears to be a constellation. The interesting thing is that this poster can also be found near the palliative care unit. But the repeated text, color, and constellation change depending on the time Slain visits the hospital. The colors can be either red, green, or blue. The constellations change shape too, but instead of having a secret meaning, appear to be randomly generated. Sadly, after a deep search in some catalogs, I couldn't find any resemblance to actual constellations, but I think I might be wrong here. Finally, the most interesting details is the text themselves, which read as follows. You are a mother. You are your mother. You are now a mother. You are no mother. You were a child. You were a bad child. You had a bad child. You will not have a child. You should have drowned. You should have drowned it. You should have drowned it out. You were in an accident. You created an accident. You were an accident. No matter what text we choose to read, each one of those four options has a direct relationship to many of the ending theories we will explore in our next video, and open the door to new interpretations of Celine's actions prior to embarking on her journey to the distant planet of Atropos. Perhaps one of the most off-putting things that can be found during Celine's multiple visits to the hospital is the sight of several drawings and kids' toys scattered around what appears to be the waiting room near the front desk. Slightly shrouded during the first visit and perfectly visible during the following ones, we can see a lot of drawings on paper, pasted to the column near the TV and some under a table, a drawing chalkboard with a familiar scene of a car crossing the forest with a full moon on the background, and a very curious toy box. But why do many of these things seem terribly familiar to us? Well, the answer is simple, we may have seen them before in the past, or in the future, depending on how the time of Returnal actually works. Many of these elements can be found inside the room of none other than the most innocent human being of Returnal. Helios The chalkboard, although with a different drawing, is clearly there. The wooden puzzle the luminescent stars and moon pasted on the hospital wall, the teddy bear, the octopus, not to be mistaken with octo, which is a different one, and every single one of the different drawings is there, inside Healy's room. Could this be an extreme coincidence and is Housemark reusing assets from the game just to fill the space? Hell no. Every single thing in this game is perfectly crafted and placed to fit a purpose, and this right here is probably a signal that either Helios visited the hospital at one time, or perhaps there is another type of connection between this waiting room and Celine's lonely child. Now that we are here in the waiting room, let's focus our attention on two of the paintings that decorate the walls. The first one, the easiest to spot, is a representation of the myth, which is briefly explained in the poem inside the book located at the front desk of the hospital, The Lamentation of Sisyphus. According to the myth, Sisyphus, king of Ephyra, cheated the gods and death itself and received an exemplary punishment by having to push an enormous rock to the very top of a hill just for it to disappear before reaching the summit, and forcing Sisyphus to start over again and again, for all eternity. But there's something wrong here. If we take a look at this painting, we can see a woman pushing the rock, not a man. 
which was the original gender of Sisyphus, according to the myth. Even funnier is the fact that the book that we mentioned earlier gives some kind of justification for this. As we scroll down the poem, we can see how a couple of words are changed from the original text, referring to the queen of Atropos, punished by chaos and her ship falling. This is a very interesting detail, as we know Celine is blonde, not brunette, so perhaps this is just a way to make this connection not that evident. But before we move away from here, there is another important secret hiding in this painting that we must talk about. If we pay attention to the painting during the different visits, we can see how the perspective of the woman pushing the rock opens up, revealing a weird humanoid figure at the top of the hill, with tentacle arms wide open, as if he or she is waiting for the Queen of Atropos to reach the summit. Is this perhaps a callback to Hyperion, the boss of the fourth biome and most notably Selene's father? Or is it just Alos, the personification of pain from Greek mythology, watching over Selene as she tries to climb helplessly the Tower of Sisyphus? The second painting makes its appearance on the fourth, fifth, and seventh visit to the hospital. Located to the right of the first one, we can see three women sitting next to each other, holding a rope or string. As with the previous painting, the poem reveals the identity of the three women. These are the Fates, or Morai, from Greek mythology, the ones that control the fate of men by weaving the thread of life. Clotho, Lachesis, and Atropos. The painting itself doesn't have any significant changes for the lining of the central character, but its purpose is clear, to show Selene her fate is already in motion and cannot be altered no matter what she does. On the third visit to the hospital, tiny set of matroshkas makes the first appearance on top of the front desk of the Saharian Memorial Hospital. Celine mentions an interesting phrase as she interacts with these dolls. The smallest consumed by the largest. And each one empty inside. In plain sight, she obviously refers to the doll's mechanism which allows them to be stacked inside each other, which basically means these are a set of Russian matroshka nesting dolls. But there is more than that to these fairly damaged dolls, as we can see them with better lining on the last visit to the hospital. Each one of these dolls seems to be fairly damaged, with notable scratches and bruises. But if we look at the details of each, we can see a very interesting resemblance to the characters of Returnal's story. According to Wikipedia, the name Matryoshka literally means little matron. And perhaps the biggest one represents Thea, which is basically the same one as the middle one, but this one has a black eye and horns, which can be Selene with her heterochromia and a possible reference to her own wrongdoings against her mother by locking her in the basement. These horns will actually obstruct the closing mechanism of the dolls, something that may not happen with the third and final doll, which has some sort of crown, more specifically, a sun crown. And who is the personification of the sun? Well, none other than Helios. We can see him in a similar spacesuit, but with an empty gaze and a different hairdo beneath the helmet. Is there a strong relationship between these dolls and the family's own relationship? Or is it just another trick by the mastermind behind all these illusions? It is evident by the end of the sixth visit to the hospital after we have interacted with Thea that Chaos is the one controlling and twisting Selene's memories, as he has previously been doing during her expeditions across the biomes of Atropos. But even when Chaos rebuilds himself at the end of the seventh visit, it has always been observing Selene's findings every time she enters the Saharian Memorial Hospital. In the same way Chaos concealed itself in one of the paintings of Selene's house, he is hiding in plain sight in the hospital, inside this tiny toy box. We can see the four little bright eyes in this dark toy resembling perfectly a miniature version of the evil space god, always paying attention to Selene to find the ultimate clue 
the one that maybe we have all been missing this whole time. Perhaps the most striking finding that Returnal's DLC brings to the spotlight are the numbers 8, 3, 6. These numbers are clearly visible on Theo's room door, and this might seem like an ordinary thing, but the most shocking surprise for me when I was doing my research for this video was realizing the origin of these numbers. Prepare to open your eyes wide, because it seems like we didn't do that before, because we have seen these numbers again and again all over the story fragments of Returnal. The number of Theo's room, the kitchen radio, the clock down the hall, the microwave, Celine's bedroom clock, and whatever this is. But most importantly, on the radio, at the exact moment of the accident, when Celine or Thea got distracted and avoided the white shadow, leading to the fatal crash that changed their lives forever. 8, 3, 6. The secret had always been there for us to see. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more PlayStation Studios related content, or even consider supporting by joining the Mr. Tequila Voice Productions Patreon with free day early access to any future videos that will be published here on the channel and many more cool perks. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later in another Returnal video here on the Visa.